All right, all right, all right, YouTube. Look, you can see me in my other phone. Do a little vlog, and we'll talk about refrigeration leak checking. We're looking for leaks in HVAC, and we'll take a little rip here. Weather's been gorgeous. It's been in between the 80s and 70s, and it's been real nice. So you get a call, say you're on call, you get a night call for a reefer unit and uh, get out there, it's low on charge. You already worked 10 or 12 hours today and you're back out there, it's midnight, one in the morning. It's low on gas and it's perfectly normal. You know, you do a, as long as you do a preliminary check and you're looking and Check all the basic areas for a big old leak spot. Looking for oil, listening, using your eyes. Got your leak detector, break it out real quick. When you're not finding anything obvious, go ahead, gas it up and make a follow up for the next day. Now, sometimes I'd get on big systems. I would like to bring another mechanic out with me and have two guys on there. Cause you have to find that leak. You gotta find the leak. And, uh, and there's a couple things when you get into leak checking. So one place I would like to always start was visual. Do a visual inspection and look for oil. And if I'd find oil, I'd rub my fingers all around, see if I could see where the oil is coming from. Always looking for the highest point of the oil. And then if I didn't have good luck with that, I'd break the leak detector out. And sometimes it'd be saturated, even on a small leak, where your leak detector is really not going to pinpoint where the leak's at. Sometimes you could you could turn the H10 way up, and you could get that H10 leak detector to get you really close to the ballpark. Sometimes you'll have to pump up the system with nitrogen, so you got some gas in there, or you might have to recover the charge, throw a little bit back in, and then pump the pressure up with nitrogen to get the pressure up. Then get your leak check, try and get close to the area with your electronic and then get some soap bubbles on there and hopefully see it with your own two eyes. You gotta see that leak. And I had a system the other day where I checked the outdoor unit and I mean I checked it good. At least in my opinion, I felt like I had done my due dil diligence and I got nothing. Check the evaporator coil, you know, thinking, ah, it's gonna be the evaporator coils. It's always the evaporator coil. Got nada, zippo. Well, I had to make the decision is, now I wanna sniff out the line set. So I had to get on top of the box between the box and the ceiling. And sure enough, I found the old Mr. Rubby on the liquid line and the conduit coming down the hole going up to the roof. And that's where my leak was. And it was a small leak. You'd have to charge the system up like once a month. And it took it took like two times of doing that to finally go, look, man, I got to spend some time on this thing and find this leak. And sometimes you just have to do that. And the feeling you get when you find that leak and fix it and you know the system's tight is unbelievable. But sometimes you'll have to peel the insulation off your suction line and check every joint and that's a pain in the butt and it's very time consuming especially on refrigeration systems where they're they're not running line set and they're actually fittings and they're brazed um, sometimes we've had to isolate each component the condensing unit and then the line set on both ends and then the evaporator coil put fittings on each and pressurize them come back the next day and see which one's losing pressure and then find the leak in each component and sometimes you'll have the leak multiple offender where you'll have more than one leak in a system and that'll happen a bunch too and it's time consuming um, there's one leak detector I've never used is the ultrasonic and I know guys are having really good luck with that leak detector um, some guys use the ultraviolet dyes but then again, the leak I was talking about earlier, you're not going to find with ultraviolet dye if you don't get above the walk-in box and the ceiling, right? 
So what I'm trying to say is sometimes leak checking, you have to get really, really involved on your system. And it takes time and it's expensive. And sometimes you gotta talk to the customer about it. Let them take them by the hand and let them know what you're doing. And But you have to find those leaks. And sometimes it's not easy. And sometimes the equipment we have lets us down. Hey, you know, the H10s, it's not bulletproof every time. There's times where the H10 will let you down. And there's times where a lot of these cheaper leak detectors will give you false positives. And that's why the H10 is such a great leak detector is you don't get false positives. But sometimes it might not pick a leak up also. So I've had that happen before too. And I'm sure I have a video somewhere on my channel the leak that the H10 didn't find and it um, that's that can happen but there's other ways to find leaks so you know you can use your eyes your ears sometimes even your nose sometimes you can smell the oil in the refrigerant at a unit and you know there's a leak believe it or not you can laugh that one off if you want but I'm being serious you can smell a leak sometimes and uh, sometimes the leaks are easy to find and sometimes you really, really have to dig into these things. And uh, that was my main rant. I don't have a problem if you do a gas and go, but you make a follow-up to come back the next day or so. As long as you've done a preliminary Preliminary, I have a hard time saying that one. Preliminary leak check, you know, for the obvious. You know, how many times have you worked on it with a crew and your co worker's done the gas and go on a Friday? You're on call on the weekend and you're back out there Saturday night because all the gas leaked out. And you take a peek and the expansion valve outlet is a gusher. And it's just like, wow, pretty simple. To find and fix and that's that's what I'm talking about just give it a preliminary and let the customer know hey I got to come back tomorrow and find this leak man you know it's two in the morning say try and save the product gas that thing up if it's within within the limits of doing a gas and go you know you got a system that's running on less than 50 pounds of gas you know got to play within the whatever the laws are and sometimes I can't remember all of them especially right now I'm not riding bikes and um, but I think it's a system under 50 pounds here in the US I don't know what it is in Europe for the Europe guys anyways that's my rant and my chat I've been super busy with calls I just haven't been filming the iPhone right there the iPhone 11 Pro puked on me I had to send it in under warranty, and that's why I haven't been filming. I don't like filming with the GoPro um, on the reefer jobs. Um, I do feel with the GoPro when I'm riding the motorcycle, though, because it just—it's for me, it's just a different setup, and uh, that's why I haven't had refrigeration videos out. And I've actually had some pretty cool calls. I got some changeouts coming in the pipeline, and. Let's see, today's Thursday. Tomorrow, Friday, I got I got some calls for after work. Maybe we can get a couple. Maybe I'll put it together, I'll try and put together a compilation video for the weekend. Look, there's the surfer. He went from a mask, wearing a mask, to having a pumpkin on his face. I like it. All right, hit the like button. Smash that subscribe button if you could for me. We'll see you on the next one.